Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey everybody, it's the Indie Mayhem Show number 60. It's uh, Mike Sorgat Sorgatron here on the Twitter, uh, video producer here in the Pittsburgh area for uh, the IWC, the RWA, and uh, so much more. Uh, Montreal Theory, Finding Zach Gallon, all kinds of fun stuff we're doing around here. And of course, with me as usual is my compatriot from San Antonio, Texas. It's Eamon Payton. At Eamon, please, to, to please on the Twitter uh, for Inspire Pro Wrestling down there. How you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic. I'm feeling much better this week. Uh, I know last week. Oh, good. Week, yes. Yeah. They got, I, they got I, weird I last week. For, for certain reasons, uh, reasons that came up minutes before we were going That's to okay. start recording. So. We fill it in and we talked to a sound guy in indie wrestling. It was, <laughs> no, we had a good conversation with Matt Carlin's in, uh, and, and wheels last week. Uh, so thank you. Thanks to them for uh, dropping in at the last minute there. Uh, so, uh, and of course you got a great guest uh, here uh, uh, from your neck of the woods here this week. But uh, first, please check us out. We're at wrestling mayhem You can subscribe to this and other shows on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, all kinds of places. And you can also please drop us a line. And let us know about what indie wrestling you're into or if you know the guest uh if we've announced the guest for the week any questions so 412-206-WMS0 or good times at wrestling mayhem show.com um and you can also uh, uh drop in live about 11 p.m eastern time 10 p.m central for amen uh at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com uh, every tuesday night and big thanks to basic sickness.com uh basic sickness does the intro music for this in the wrestling mayhem show uh so uh pittsburgh original and thanks uh, for uh, uh th- tossing that to us so we can spruce things up a little bit around here amen <coughs> who are we talking to this week this week we have a, a very special guest like you said from my neck of the woods down here in texas uh really one of the uh, more prominent stars of independent wrestling across the state of texas uh he has won multiple championships uh, across the state, You know, challenge, competed for multiple organizations in the state as well, uh, and is definitely all around one to uh, really keep your eye on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show this week, the Texas Lion, Carson. Carson, how are you doing this evening? Hey, what's up, guys? I'm doing great. Thank you all for having me on. No problem. Uh, so I guess to sort of start this off, we start off mainly with kind of an icebreaker sort of question per se. Uh, to, to kind of get into how everything started with you. Uh, so I'd like to ask to, to start, uh, what was your first ever memory of uh, professional wrestling? First memory, I was in middle school and I made friends with a guy named Cody Grubbs and he always talked about wrestling. I didn't know what he was talking about. And one day I spent the night at his house and he had a poster on the wall of a big muscular guy with long hair. And I said, whoa, who is that? He said, that's Triple H, that's my favorite wrestler. And then he pulls this bin out from under his bed, and it's just full of action figures, all wrestlers. <laughs> and he tells me who everybody is, and then he brings out the ring, and I'm like, man, this stuff's awesome. And he says, well, it's Monday. Wait till tonight. There's a show called Raw. And so when that came on, that was the first time I watched it, and I was just hooked. I saw I saw things like Tajiri backflipping and spinning Green Mist, you know, and then mm-hmm. Chris Jericho was the rock star of the show, and then The Rock was this guy that went out and talked trash, and then... Triple H was the bodybuilder, you know, the guy that you, you wouldn't want to see in a back alley. And I thought, okay, I don't think I'm ever going to get tired of this. And obviously I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely if, if, if you stuck to it. Uh, uh, going from watching it sort of as a fan uh, and, and transitioning into becoming a wrestler, did you have any you know, sort of sports background or, or anything that you were involved with uh, before deciding to train to become a professional wrestler? You know, actually, man, not much. Uh, when I was younger in middle school, I played all the sports. But when I got to high school, I was kind of uh, kind of an outcast type kid. Didn't know what I wanted to do. I couldn't really fit in with anybody. I, so I wanted to be a cool kid, but I also liked hanging out with the nerds. And I wanted to be a football player, but I liked to hang out with the artistic kids, you know, that didn't do all that. So I never knew what to do with myself. And it wasn't until after high school I started, you know, I found out what bodybuilding was. I started working out, and then I got into wrestling. Awesome. And then, and if I'm mistaken, you started training in uh, Austin, if, if I'm correct, under uh, George De La Isla. Exactly. Yeah, in 2000, June 2009 is when I started over there. So what was that like, uh, finally making that decision to become a professional wrestler? And was it as hard as you thought it would be, like going into it? Where uh, Were you surprised by it in any way? Uh, did anything sort of uh, stick out to you? 
Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember exactly how it happened. I, I kept telling my dad I wanted to be a wrestler, and he, you know, he kept saying no, go to college, keep going to college. And mm. finally, I fucked him into it. And I, you know, I stopped going to college, and I called George De La Isla, and he was the nicest guy ever. And he told me he would train me exactly how I needed, and I, you know, give me all the basics I needed. So I finally met up with him, went to the school, and seeing, you know, the ring. For the, you know, my very first ring I could ever get into, a real ring. Getting into that and just feeling the ropes and feeling what it felt like under your feet and trying to run and climb. You know, it's just such an amazing feeling saying, hey, I'm actually going to do this. And then you get into the actual training. And the first night, I couldn't lift my head off my pillow because we mm-hmm. were learning how to take bumps. And, you know, it stayed like that for a few months. Your body just couldn't get used to it. You know, we're purposely hurting ourselves. And then, you know, after, you know, a few months, you get used to it and then you start learning, you know, more basics and more moves. And you never get unsore. You just get used to being sore. Definitely. And and going from, like you said, you started in 2009. And, and I would consider now, now in 2013, and even many years before that, you become, I would say, one of the more prominent wrestlers on the independent scene in Texas. I think when people think of Texas wrestling, you're, you're one of the top ones that really comes to mind. Uh, what, what has it been like sort of rising up the ranks and, and, and how do you feel, what do you feel has gotten to you, gotten you to the places that you are now? Um, when I first started wrestling and getting myself out there, uh, going to these different shows, I didn't know anybody. But I, even though I didn't know who anybody was, I could look at the matches and look in the locker room and see who was important and who was not necessarily important. Mm-hmm. And I thought, if I'm going to be good at this, I got to hang out with the guys that are important. And when I was sitting in these locker rooms, I saw guys like Mike Dell, Scott Summers, uh, Tim Storm, uh, Mike Fox, you know, diff- different guys, you know, all big muscular guys that look like professional TV wrestlers. And I thought, I need, I need to learn from these guys, you know, firsthand. And so I slowly made friends with them. And it's hard. It's hard to get into those circles, you know, because, Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, you know, our uh, our wrestling is a lot like a high school. There's circles, you know, different friends. And there's that top circle. And in that top circle, we're all really close. But at the same time, we're fighting for that top spot. But that's what keeps us so close. We're all competitive and we try 100% every day. And I learned that little by little. And I became friends with these guys and learned their secrets of bodybuilding and wrestling and promos and how to carry yourself as a professional. And that's honestly, you know, how I've gotten to where I am now because of all those guys. Definitely. And and. I, I could, you know, look at those names that you kind of listed off and I can kind of see a little bit of the influences of like just your style and, and the presence that you have in the ring. Cause I think that's one of your definitely biggest strengths is that you have a very great uh, presence uh, whenever you do wrestle. Um, talk about, you know, sort of some of the names that you've gotten to face. I know this past year as well, it has been a big year for you. Uh, I know you got to wrestle uh, Satoshi Kojima for the NWA uh, World Heavyweight Championship back when he held, uh, back when he held the belt. Um, and, and, you know, I've gotten to face some of the best in Texas and even travel out, you know, to other areas as well. Uh, what's been some of your greatest opponents, I guess, is the best way to put it, as, as people that you may have learned from or just people you really enjoyed wrestling? Uh, the two men that I've learned more from than anybody else in wrestling ever, and it's because I wrestled them and learned from them along, the, you know, along our tour of wrestling each other. We, you know, we are dudes, are Rob Conway and Charlie Haas. Mm. Those two guys, their minds, if we could just cut open their minds and look at it and just see how much they know about wrestling, you would be amazed. Awesome, definitely. And, and you know, I, I would think from you, because I know you mentioned it a lot of times before, one of your big goals is getting to the top and getting to WWE or, or you know, with any sort of mainstream sort of top uh, promotion. Um, and I would think from guys like Conway and Charlie Haas, those are the guys that kind of look to as, you know, guys that have made it up there and, and, and have those experiences uh, uh, competing for the top organization. Yeah. What was the question? Oh, uh, just sort of, is that, that's sort of your focus, right? Being sort of, you know. Yeah, that, these, and they, yeah, exactly. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And uh, a name I forgot also was Lance Hoyt. He's another one. He's mm-hmm. been there and he teaches, you know, they, they tell me these things because they see the potential in me. So they know they're not wasting their breath. They know, they know I'm going to use this information. Every bit of information they give me, I'm going to use it. And uh, they tell me everything. They say, hey, kid, when you get up there, you know, you, they don't like this. They do like this. Do some mm-hmm. of this. Don't do some of this. And, you know, that's, you know, that's like I'm listening because I want to get to a, a point and they're helping because they believe I can get to that point. And, you know, not only is it fun to go out and steal the show with these guys, but it's even funner 
to get to the back and hear hear from them what I could work on and you know what I did great things like that. Definitely. And uh, sort of going into uh, now, obviously we're sort of in the in the early part of the year, um, and obviously in this part people sort of make goals and and resolutions uh, uh, as far as their life goes, but also a lot of wrestlers make uh, wrestling resolutions. Uh, is there anything that stick out to you as stuff you want to accomplish this year? Uh, exactly. I you will see me uh, if I have if, if I can do anything about it. I'm trying my hardest right now. You will see me in New Japan Pro Wrestling in 2015. Definitely. I mean, you got the chance to wrestle Kojima, so you've gotten to see what that's like as well. So, yeah, and I, I, they, they know who I am. Every contact over there has, they have my resume, and we've talked, and they know who Carson is for sure. And it's just a matter of time before I get into one of those rings over there. Awesome. Definitely would love to see that. Um, a, a new question we've, that we've kind of sort of adopted is one of our regular ones on the show uh, to sort of dive into um, sort of the process of what the wrestlers sort of go through as well as um is there anything in particular that you're watching uh, or studying uh whether it's like a in wrestling if there's a particular genre that you're currently into or or or, or specific wrestler stuff that you're watching uh, uh is there anything that uh, you're sort of watching uh currently yeah uh currently and i've you know done this the past few years uh the years 2000 to 2003 ish or four ish right there mm -hmm. uh those are what really influenced my my uh, childhood and now my career, you know, and why I do certain things I do in the ring. Because, you know, one thing some of the guys are missing now is, like you were talking about, I have a presence, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the presence is something, you, you know, it's, it's kind of like the it fact. You either naturally have it a little bit, but at the same time, you got to work your ass on every little bit, you know, to keep it and make sure you stay believable. And, and I don't see a lot of guys with it right now in WWE, but back then, 2001, 2002, Everybody that stepped in that ring was was a rock star. You, you looked at him, you said, "Man, this guy right here, that's a pro wrestler, that's a celebrity, you know, superstar." Mm -hmm. And when I watch those guys, you go back and you watch the matches, and you know they don't they don't do much at all. There's very few moves, and that's how I like to wrestle. I just you know very simple, old school, punch, kick, and you know bring my big stuff out at the end when I'm really trying to win. And that's how they wrestled because they didn't need all the moves. They just had a presence about them. And I'm glad you mentioned that earlier because that's what I'm all about wrestling. It's, you know, we're entertainers at the same time. And mm -hmm. it's great if you can go out there and wrestle and do every move, but it doesn't matter if you can't tell a story along with it. And it kind of goes to like what you mentioned, like when you first got into a watch again in middle school is because it caught your, caught your attention or caught your eye. And then, and, and you know, that whole thing of presence, I think really aided, I aided in that. And like you said, those kind of guys from that era, I uh, definitely had it in spades, so I, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, sort of to kind of close this out, and it's the question that we, uh, we ask all our guests, and, and they tend to take it in very different uh, directions across uh, the indie wrestling landscape, so feel free to, uh, to take it however, uh, however you wish. But uh, uh, the question I have for you is, what is your best and worst thing about uh, independent wrestling? <laughs> oh, the best thing. The best thing is definitely I get to make my own schedule, you know. I'm my own manager, and if I want to wrestle somewhere, I can wrestle there. And if I, and if I don't want to wrestle, I can say no. You know, I pick and choose my battles. Uh, the worst thing about independent wrestling are promoters that book crappy talent uh, because, uh, you know, the shows that are all crappy talent, which obviously I don't get involved with those shows, but mm -hmm. there's some shows that are half and half, great guys and half of crap. And I, it's just a pain in the ass being on those shows because, in order to make a product look good, the whole product has to look good. You can't, you can't go out there, you know, and give everybody, you know, you can't turn chicken shit into chicken salad. Yeah. And that's one, that's one of the first things I ever learned in pro wrestling from George Daly. <laughs> and, and, you know, and sometimes I have to get in the ring with them and you know, it's just, it's not fair to us. The guys that really, really work hard and want to do something with this, you know, having to deal with stuff like that, guys that don't care. And I wish the guys that didn't care would just stop showing up. And that sounds so, you know, it makes me sound kind of like an asshole, but it's it's just yeah. the hard, the whole truth, you know. No, definitely, and, and I think people can kind of see from the promotions that you work as well. It's 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 very much the high level, so it, like like the names that you listed, the, that kind of level of talent that that really separates those companies from others. Um, so, so I definitely see that. Um, well, thank you, thank you so much, Carson, for coming on the show and and, and sharing a, a bit of your story. Um, if people uh, listening want to follow you on social media, or if you're wrestling any upcoming shows, uh, 
feel free to uh, plug away. Yeah, man. You know, I got a Facebook under Houston Carson. I have an Instagram at Houston Carson, all lowercase. And my Twitter is at Carson underscore TX. And I'm on all three of those all the time. I have new statuses and pictures. And I promise you, you will not be bored if you come follow me. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And then if, if you uh, ever see Carson on a bill for an upcoming show, I would definitely encourage you to go check it out because uh, I can encourage you that you will not be disappointed. So uh, thank you once again, Carson. And, and me and Sorg now are going to dive into some of the stuff that happened this week in the world of independent wrestling. That's right, Eamon. We're going to talk about some wrestling. And, of course, uh, well, first, a little plug. Uh, you know, the, What I'm about to talk about is actually available over on Pittsburgh Wrestling, or, yeah, PittsburghWrestling.com or IndieWrestling.us. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff going over on over there, um, you know, including you know this show that I'm about to mention, Cage Combat and Clearfield, from this past Saturday night. And we got some stuff from Vicious Outcast Wrestling, uh, which, you know, upcoming, we'll have their scaffold match that I've been hearing about uh, from uh, here in the area uh, Saturday night as well. Uh, Tommy Dreamer at IWC Reloaded last month. Uh, seasons beatings with the RWA. Johnny Gargano's uh, Best of Part 1 with uh, Prime Cuts for Prime Wrestling. We got one coming up actually with Gregory Iron. CM Punk improved Gregory Iron. There's going to be a best of there of him coming up in Prime Wrestling PWO as well in the Ohio area. So, in Cleveland, technically. Uh, but like I mentioned, there was Cage Fury this past weekend. Um, a lot of fun going Ooh. up there. It, the furthest out we go for a show around here, Eamon. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Two and a half hours may sound like nothing for Texas, probably. Two and a, I mean, it's still a good. It's still a good trip. <laughs> it's a good say. chunk when the generally the shows that I deal with are like 45 minutes from my house. Like, yeah, like an hour is the worst, and that's like visiting VOW. And in this case, it, it's one of those, you know, IWC, we do a lot of production, and this, there's a, not as, as many theatrics as I show you the guy with face paint. Um, <laughs> uh, Crimson I, will, I will say that the, there's the one thing I do kind of like about IWC compared to just stuff I see in Texas, too, is in Texas, there's not a lot of traveling organizations. Right. There'll, there'll be people that will sort of work one city. So right. it's cool to see somebody like IWC getting out to, you know, Clearfield and, and Elizabeth and, and, and all these other, you know, all yeah. these other areas. A whole other atmosphere, right? Um, yeah. I mean, and it's... um. It, it, they do Clearfield. They do Meadville once a year. They used to do Franklin once a year, and they've kind of always done that. Like they always base out of like you know an area, like like Elizabeth for their major shows. Um, but that the, they were out of Monroeville, the other side of town, for a while, I guess. Um, but yeah, they always do this. They always like used to run down to Union Town, and I don't know, maybe it's because uh, geographically how how it kind of works around here. Um, <laughs> But uh, or, or even like RWA will will go down to Cal U for those big shows. Yeah, you know, um, which maybe it's more of a northeastern thing. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. But maybe I think she had graphically because you know I I noticed this with California. Like towns aren't clustered in the same manner they are here. You know, or they are clustered. You know, like I know, like when I was in San around San Francisco, it seemed like there would be like four towns together, right? And then nothing, and mountains, and highway, and then uh, like four more towns together. Whereas right. it's kind of interspersed, you know, around here. Uh, and maybe that's, that's part of it. They get to spread out a little bit. Um, and, and this is nice. Like you say, it's out there. It's kind of up in the mountains. <laughs> like we're almost to New York State when we go out to this thing. And um, and, and it's a different crowd. And, and, and the one thing is kind of a thing I've always been critical about these is like kind of saying, you know, we do all these storylines with IWC. Um, yeah and progress all these ones and i don't think and i can see at the dvd table nobody buys anything except for the other shows from clearfield you know that, that's that's interesting and that's- um they're not interested in what happens in meadville they're not interested in what happens you know what happened last month even with tommy dreamer you know winning the belt or whatever they're interested in wrestling that happens there in clearfield and and that's it and that's really it you know <laughs> is it more I, i'm Thinking, I, I when I when I hear that, I feel like it's sort of a thing where they value more of the live experience. Maybe I think so. And, and I, stuff that they got to see. And, there's and, a lot of, and especially they're not interested in the digital downloads so much. I don't think there's much internet up there in Clearfield. I feel like, that's, um, that's true. or or people at least that, that, that partake in that. I guess you know it's kind of a it's a different world in, in, when it comes to that. Um, I mean, this is at a fairgrounds. This is this is a building at the fairgrounds that that we're mm-hmm. showing. Uh, this this is in. Um, I've never been to their fair. I've only 
participated in this building. And I realize I've been to Clearfield a lot of times at this point over the years, but um, but but they we're doing all these theatrics and they and and um, but. Yeah, and I think a lot of them because I've noticed because like when something would happen when there's a big interaction at ringside with where it's like somebody will come up to me at the table, you know, I had a guy actually we were not done and the guy walked right in front of my uh, crowd mic and was asking me, so how much is this DVD going to be? I'm like, shut, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> right. And before, I felt bad because he didn't stick around until when the show actually ended that I could actually talk with him. But yeah, is, is this uh, more than any other place, people will come up to me where I'm working at the DVD. Yeah, I'm live switching. I'm kind of involved in things. I'm live switching. Well, you're, well, you're I'm, the I'm, DVD man. I'm the yeah. DVD guy, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, asking about it. And it, it is, it's really interesting. Um uh, of course, you know, retirement match for Cato. Uh, you know, if you're in the area, you know who this guy is. I don't know if he's really con anywhere else, uh, but uh, he's been around for ages, ages. Uh, but uh, another, you know, they, he's only really done IWC shows, at least in the recent years, up there in Clearfield for this. So, um, but no, really good, really good fun time. They they brought the cage. Um, they're doing something different. Second show under Justin Plummer. Um, he actually started here, um, I think he said four years ago to the day. He was kind of the fill-in um, um, commentator, not commentator, uh-huh. uh, um, announcer for the night. Uh, so, uh, And now he's the owner. Four years later, uh, yeah. kind of an interesting uh, story to share there that night. Uh, but a lot of fun, um, you know, a good wrestling show. Uh, we often go to these shows, and they're definitely the B shows, right? You know, in comparison, to, I mean, we did. There was no Dalton Castle, RJ City. Only the Super Indie Belt was defended. Only half of the tag team champions was there. But we did get Jock Sampson, and we did get you know, uh, you know, Andrew Palace, Chess Flex, or uh, you know, it, it, we got some significant stuff, and we had a good show regardless, and also good mm-hmm. to see, especially with. A recent conversation, women's wrestling returning as well. Marty yeah. Bell, Marty Bell, and Angel Dust, who are definitely no slouches as far as the the women's indie scene goes. Um, so so good to see them there, and I'm hoping that continues. It, it, it's going to be really telling because we always seem to have a ladies match when we go to Clearfield. Um, but will we have them when we come back to uh, Elizabeth and White Oak? Right. Um, so there's that. Um, but no, a lot of fun. I, I don't really have much else to say about it, though. It was it was another IWC show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was good, a lot though. of fun. It was a lot of fun. If you, if you, as, as long as there's nothing like horrible, like tra- tragic that happened, then that's usually pretty good. Hey, considering a year ago what happened to this show, which a year ago I was very, very angry because somebody did something stupid at ringside and broke one of my cameras. Yes. Um. Then he's not around anymore, which is kind of interesting. Uh. But uh, it's uh, you know it, no, I, I, it was really cool. Because it's it's such a it's a, such a drag to go all the way out, you know out for a show like this, right? Um, but I came away feeling really good. You know, uh, I really uh, you know I, I I had a good vibe for that two and a half hour drive that ended up <laughs> like you know going to bed at five thirty in the morning. And I know people have worse drives. You know, we have people from Buffalo and who knows what else. Um, but uh, you know, it's a uh, Oh, there's a fan cam of an old IWC show that came up next in this video. That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, it was you know, it was a lot of fun, and they kind of like you know, I, I need more of those shows, and I don't know what it is, but uh, the last few that I've gone to, I, I get that feeling a bit more, especially with uh, IWC, you know, the way things are going over there. So right. you know, really cool, really cool experience there. So I don't know what's going on. What's got, got your attention? Now, you know, maybe we should have you speak a little bit because we, you really wanted to talk about the <laughs> what was it, Kaylee and uh, Kimberly uh, and, Kimberly. and uh, Chris Dickinson. Yeah, yeah, we we talked about that last week because they kind of broke around that point about the stuff that was happening in Beyond Wrestling. Right. Uh, some controversial stuff. Uh, uh, it, I think it's very interesting. The uh, I'm I'm more interested usually in the response of these situations from fans and and just people online or whatever as opposed to, uh you know the the actual like need of it uh, I I think and Beyond Wrestling spoke of this and I I kind of agree with them on the fact that I think a lot of people made this an issue of intergender wrestling uh, and I I don't know about that because I, I I think a lot of people in response to this sort of give a blanket definition being like, this is why intergender wrestling is bad. And this right. is why intergender wrestling isn't good. I, I don't think you can label a genre of professional wrestling because of one instance. 
I, I've seen a lot of good intergender wrestling that doesn't involve the things that were done in this match. Um, that's very safe on both parts. And that's very, um, you know, not in a sense of, I think, and one of the big things was like talking about how women sort of, because of their w want to prove themselves in a male uh, dominated industry that they would want to take these kind of risks. Um, and, and I guess that point can be argued, but I think in, it's, it's mainly a case of all wrestlers take these kind of risks in mm -hmm. an attempt to get over, you know, male or female. That's the way I see it. Um, I, I, but there was some really interesting response that came from it. Uh, Beyond Wrestling, I think, uh, did really well. Uh, Kimberly released a video uh, talking about how she was she went to go she went to a doctor to sort of you know make sure nothing was wrong and she, she they cleared her to wrestle the next weekend. She was fine, you know. There was no injuries out of this. Um, and and uh, Beyond Wrestling in response said that they would be punishing both Kimberly and Chris Dickinson for their actions uh, because like I think another good point is that you only really saw two like a minute or a half of a of a much longer match, mm -hmm. uh, and because that's the part, the part of it that went viral, um, and people noted that Kimberly was the aggressor of most of the match. She got in a lot of offense, and she even got in an unprotected chair shot as well. So it's it's I don't think it's a part of one wrestler being unsafe. It's it's a case of two wrestlers having a very certain match. And I've actually had the privilege of working with Kimberly at Inspire Pro Wrestling uh, back in January, and she's phenomenal. And, and she's one of my favorite uh, female independent wrestling talents. Um, I think it's an unfortunate situation all around, but hopefully stuff like that will kind of subside. I, I think it has subsided, really. And even beyond wrestling, uh, uh, for a period of time when they were releasing the raw footage from this event, uh, donated all the proceeds to, uh, to Boston University uh, for their research on concussion testing and, and, and stuff of that nature, which I think is really good. And I think that's the big thing. Uh, it goes to what we were talking about in previous weeks on the Mayhem Show about there's a level of trust and there's a level of safety that comes with professional wrestling and especially with concussions and, and, and with that stuff. And we even kind of talked about that on this week's Mayhem Show with the whole uh, Bill DeMott thing. Uh, so it's, 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 more, it's more apparent. Um, and I, I personally hate I don't think any any person should still be doing unprotected chair shots in 2015 no. with the knowledge that we have now. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think you know I think the situation was handled pretty well though, and and um, yeah, it, as long as it gets people talking, I, I, I and I guess in, in a way, Beyond Wrestling got kind of a bit of success by it because they, I mean, the clip was shared. Mm -hmm. by pretty much everyone yeah the clip i'm looking at here on beyond site is uh, over 90 91 000 views yeah. um and, and there's a discussion i was having with somebody over the weekend about how beyond is just killing it as far as using so social media getting Absolutely. the word out their alternative we talked about in the past and they really headlined you know they really spe spearheaded that you know uh, something like this they made you know, for better or worse, that it happened, and it's a okay. We gotta do something about this. Kind of yeah. to the point where, <clears throat> when uh, a few years ago, I it was just telling you know, my, you know, talking with somebody about this the other day too. Uh, I did that prime wrestling show, and it was mm -hmm. Rhino against Jason Bain uh, up in Cleveland, and uh, the ring imploded in the middle of the match right before intermission, mind you, too. Um, and they. Uh, <laughs> I just ran into the 10 most horrifying wrestling injuries of all time next time. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> oh, boy. I can't wait for this one. I might I might tag this for later because um, this shows Goldberg and uh, Bret Hart first. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, but no, but like when the ring collapsed and I was ringside on camera when that happened and it, and it, and it went down and I, I'm just like, I'm on the headset with the guy. I'm like, dude, you get this on YouTube tonight. I'm, I'm like get this on yeah. youtube tonight this is gonna be great and it got them ex it, it got them some some uh, you know they, they got and, 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 and to be honest credit it was actually originally like i think a fan cam footage on facebook that got that was originally what went oh, viral really? so and, so, and, and, so what i'm, they what I'm seeing it looks like it, it's it's it looks like they just put back to back the raw footage from each camera they had on hand they did. They, they released okay. that to sort So you can see of, every yeah. angle of, you know, how did she take that move? How did she take that chair shot? And you can 
scrutinize it as wrestlers, as fans, and everything, which is you know, and and really, it, it, there was the people that were going to find that video that <clears throat> that never watched Beyond Wrestling before. I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, it, they, they they're either going to react in two ways. They're they're going to be angry about it and not watch Beyond Wrestling, which they already weren't, which they already were doing, or they're going to see something and and maybe. They're going to follow what Beyond Wrestling and, and does. He, even, and and, it, they've even dressed this up, too, because they're like, hey, um, and here, if I can pull up the video. Um, here, uh, the she responds with updates on her condition following the match. Uh, he responds to the controversy in his match. You know, <laughs> and I don't know if they're kayfabe for real, whatever, but still, they're drawing they're, they're, you they're in. They're very much, because uh, I, I saw both, uh, Dickinson one was a bit more recent. They're very much on the line between sort of kayfabe and... Right, right. And, yeah. And and like they're they're being super smart about how they're using YouTube, um, and and, and you know staying in everybody's mindset here too. Yeah, yeah, and even yeah, he looks like he's kind of promoted out from from. Uh, yeah, his is a bit here. more promoed. Uh, yeah, and Kimber's is more of a kind of shoot esque like because Kimber's was more of a I'm okay guys like you know, I I you know I'm sort of reassuring people that she was fine, um, but yeah it's. It's it's in you can you can treat that situation two ways. You can treat it like uh you know uh, I'm trying to think of the proper phrasing, but you can treat it as if it doesn't exist, mm -hmm. and then you can, you can try to ignore it and hope people will ignore it or, or forget about it, or you can respond to it and you can you know do what they did. And it's that's much smarter than anything, and there's going to be people that are you know, ups, gonna be upset and aren't going to like anything that Beyond Wrestling would would say about it, you know? So I, I you know, and those people are, are gonna, you know, ne just not gonna be ever be happy with any of the situation. No, 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 because it's definitely a, a atypical situation uh, all, all over the place. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's what it is. So, um, but hey, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, this is, you're always going to see stuff like this, especially in the indies where they're not as scrutinized typically as WWE. I mean, you know, we talked, we had a big conversation on Wrestling Mayhem Show about what the trainer did with Bill, Bill DeMott. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's equal or worse conditions sometimes in training facilities on the indies because nobody's yeah. looking at that stuff, right? There's no, mon there's no monitoring. No, I mean, I, I, no. I can't think of any in particular. But no, no, but I mean, I'm sure there's been rough situations and there's nothing i mean is the indies there's no there's no overseeing you know who you're going to complain to and that's where you just go to some message board and honestly and, and start you know railing against people you know and <laughs> uh well oh what i'm sorry did i hit a nerve there no no, uh, no, no, no. i i i kind of because I, I know what message board you may be i don't know i don't know it could be any message board you know any um, message board about indie wrestling any, any yeah any any indie wrestling message board message board <laughs> um, but you know, but, but but then you know, what does that do? You know, it it doesn't yeah. help anybody. You know, versus you know, any other situation. All you can do is say, "Don't train with these guys." You know, <laughs> and share <laughs> your true. story and, and oh, hope you, it gets out there. There are no Yelp it. reviews for indie training schools. No, there that isn't. I'm aware you, of. You, if you, there you is, is hope. there? I would love it. Did, did, did you? Hey, did you indie Yelp your? Uh, yeah, yeah, Yelp. Oh God, if indie wrestling indie, company, indie Yelp. wrestling Yelp. We're starting uh -oh. a new business, Eamon. We're spinning off the podcast. Uh, that's, a, that's a great and horrible idea. Give us time. your <laughs> review of this indie wrestling promotion, school, or DVD production. Um, it, I, I feel like there's some website similar like that. Out, like it's not it's not a Yelp kind of website, but like like where they have you can I, the closest I can think is like cage match where you can like look at wrestling promotions and usually there'll be like a comment section at the bottom, but maybe that's an idea. Nobody listening to this show steal that idea. That's, hey, I got that indie wrestling us. Maybe that's what we can spin it into. There, there so, you go. There you go. There you go. Indie indie Yelp. Oh, Yelp. Somebody bought that dot com. I'm already too late. Um, anyways, I will. Yelp's gonna sue the shit out of you if you do that. Anyways, I don't know anything else wrestling going on. Uh, I know PWX has a show this weekend here in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, PWXTV.com. If you want to go check that out, and they got a lot of videos online, just you know promoting the local guy, Saint Patty's Night of Champions. If you want to check that out, uh, great guys like Vince or Vince Russo, Chris Larusso. <laughs> 
so who's been popping up of course on uh ring of honor tv lately uh wait kato's in here must be part of his retirement tour uh g raver a friend of the show super beast who i think just had a scaffold match which i still need to figure out how they did that in that small building at vow um <laughs> and uh all kinds of other fun stuff there so that's in the pittsburgh area if you're in the area there or watch their stuff online on youtube and stuff pwx tv dot com uh i don't know what else is there what they started a new show again that's interesting <laughs> the epa they, they, now they are on episode three of steel city tv this is like the third reboot i've seen of their television show um i don't know oh and it's running tuesdays up against podcast day thanks a lot guys. of course, what, of every, course. I, they, oh they this is another one clearly. i i just because i just saw him on here alex, alex daniel um he, he's one of uh, Johnny Gargano's. He is one of Johnny Gargano's. Uh, well, I saw him in an opening match with Chris, Chris LaRusso at... Uh, yeah, let's see, let's see some, cool, some cool stuff here. Uh, open, yeah, he was in the opening match at VOW last month uh, with Chris LaRusso. Uh, and I know I've seen him in the past up there, too. Uh, but he is also in a three-way with uh, Dravico, Dravico uh, he's a, who's an IWC uh, school grad recently, uh, and Chris... Uh, I'm sorry. God, names tonight. Colin Delaney. Um, yeah. Look, look out for this kid. Uh, he's freaking awesome. Um, he also, really cool guy. He also works a lot for AIW. Uh, yeah, I know, I know he was in a tag match with uh, Gargano and uh, Josh Prohibition against the dudes on TV. Yeah, uh, which is Ro, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Ethan Carter, and uh, DJZ. So yeah, I, I always hear really good things about him. So he, he's definitely one that I've seen pop up a bit more often. Just, just every once in a while. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, I got to talk to him a little bit. Real cool dude. Um, and uh, in a really good matchup there as part of that the Cage Clearfield, Cage Combat and Clearfield. Oh boy, <laughs> I am so sorry. This is the last show I do. So much alliteration. Night. So much alliteration. I'm popping through here. See if anybody else that pops out of here. Everybody, can I point this out? Uh, everybody has, um, Green Lantern tights. Really. Like I, I, I you, probably, you probably don't notice because you probably don't notice the insignias. But if you've read Blackest Night or read some Green Lantern, and there's like the different colors uh, rings, and so many times I see them on people's tights. I just saw the blue one on on some guy's tights randomly. Uh, uh, Palace used to have one on on on, on his tights, um, but uh, it, it pops up a lot. Um, Zelda insignias do too, but um, I appreciate yeah, I, that. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that happening a lot. <laughs> So, um, I don't know. Anything else coming up that's on your radar? Uh, there's uh, obviously, you know, indie wrestling ever. Uh, the one that I can think of that's in Texas that I think you should check out uh, if you're in the Houston area is for uh, Lone Star Championship Wrestling. Uh, they have an event uh, this Friday, March 13th. Uh, the uh, big, big sort of name is that Cole Cabana has been signed to uh, be at that event. Uh, so, uh, he will be in action. Also, just signed, I think, today. Uh, friend of the show, friend, two friends of the show, uh, Ray Rowe taking on Keith Lee, which I think is a dream match of all sorts, uh, because Keith Lee is giant and Ray Rowe is giant, and they are very powerful men. Uh, so uh, I think you would definitely, if you're in Houston, I would encourage you to check that out. That's uh, Lone Star Championship Wrestling. Uh, I believe it's, uh, I can't remember what the URL is, but it's, uh, I think it's lscwrestling.com. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, and also, but you can also search on Facebook, Lone Star, Lone Star, oh god, Lone Star Championship Wrestling, it's like the Cage Combat and Clearfield with me, I, <laughs> it, it's difficult, wrestling games are difficult, uh, but go check them out, god. Uh, because uh, they're really good guys, uh, and you should definitely support them. I'm going to pull out all the random Nate Stein Indie Wrestling upcoming events email, and I found SoCalWrestling.com. <laughs> Let's take an analyze I, this. I think they're in Oceanside, California, at the Oceanside Boys and Girls Club. Uh, club they have a show saturday march 14th because i know yeah yeah I, I, again just kind of looking out there they got some youtube stuff uh going on so let's take a look at this i'm very randomly checking out what socal pro is about uh they got a curious uh looking group of wrestlers there um this was my problem you know there was the idea of like hey we should move to california i'm like no I don't know what wrestling is like in California. Well, I like, there's this. I, there's, uh, I don't there's know. I, I don't know how you feel about your Texas stuff, but I, I like my uh, my Northeast style wrestling. I don't know what I could do. I don't know how I feel about... Uh, I would love... I Honestly, I would love to see Sorg at a PWG show. 
because from what I hear, it is just so. I would love to out be... of the norm. Everyone's like standing, like drinking like pitchers of beer, and like people are diving on you, and, and they may dive on you, and they may very well may hit you because you're so packed in. But uh, yeah, I would love to see Sorg in that environment and see how he handles it. Let me see how it handles it. You realize I am a frequenter of the uh, uh, Insane Clown Posse that is, shows. That is true. I mean, is I, it basically the wrestling version of an that. ICP show? Because. Because I that is say, my I don't know jam. How similar it would be to the gathering, but uh, <laughs> but who knows? You may even stop into a, a local celebrity at a PWG show too, which is kind of kind of crazy. I know Ronda Rousey and nice. uh, her crew was there for a recent show, so yeah, I I, I really want to see you like in that because it's so like mm-hmm. like the definition of indie if, wrestling. If, if I'm ever indie wrestling. If I'm ever lucky enough that it looks like uh, my California visits are going to be a yearly holiday event. Uh, if there's ever like a PWG show and it's still five hours away, mind you, from where I right. would be. Uh, but I would definitely uh, try to arrange something. Maybe we can meet up with our boy Alex out there in, uh, in the Long Beach area and, uh, and and do something there. So um, no, I'd be, I, I'd be, I still got to come to Texas. For one, no, oh, yeah, no, so. you should come. Your te- Texas should be your priority in, <laughs> in, in this whole scenario. Uh, well, let's, let's be real. Um, but yeah, definitely, yeah, you know, indie wrestling is a multifaceted uh thing, uh, throughout you know the whole United States, it's different everywhere. So, and the dog agrees. Wait a minute, are you wait, are you in Corpus Christi? I am in Corpus Christi. I've right. been announcing you from San Antonio all night long. I just go with it. I just, <laughs> yeah. Like there's no dogs in your dorm room. What? <laughs> by way, by way of Corpus Christi, they were they have been quiet for most of this most of this uh, podcast. Oh, all time. is revealed. All is revealed. All right. On that note, if there's nothing else, nothing I can think of. All right, we've been talking indie wrestling. Always a good time. Good to get back into the groove with you here, Eamon, Talking some wrestling. I'm, I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Taking them, but we 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 carried on without you. I'm really glad we did. Um, mm-hmm. We ca- gotta keep the streak alive. Uh, so, like I said, in the future, we're going to be talking to. Uh, we're scheduled to talk to Pedro DeLuca, who's actually the announcer here. A very great announcer. We can maybe talk about the origin of Cache um, and uh, keeping that alive. And uh, he is. Um, I, I I can tell he's a huge, 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 huge wrestling fan. When we just start talking wrestling, I think he's going to have a lot of fun with us. Um, and I understand has a pretty incredible wrestling collection as well uh from what i'm told um and also uh we're scheduled in two weeks to talk with justin Plummer. now we've had him on the show before but before i even had an inkling that he was going to be taking over the damn company and becoming my That's boss true. so there's that so uh two shows in we're gonna see if he still has the shine of <laughs> being a promoter uh, if he's still got the positive outlook two months in, um, and or if his his dreams have been squandered, uh, no, no, that's not a way to put it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, it'll be interesting as a new promoter learning the ropes of a very established company, um, and he's at least the actually I think he's the fourth owner of IWC. Numero quattro. See how that works out. Yep, lucky number four. Lucky number. <laughs> Or whatever that is. So we'll be talking with him and whoever Eamon gets in between there. Um, you got to get somebody very special for WrestleMania week. We will. I, I'll have to think of someone someone, someone that lives up to that week. You know who I've been bugging you to get. Yes. So yes, I, won't, I won't put you on the spot here, but I, it would be really cool. Um, but anyways... On that note, thank you everybody for joining us. Amen at Amen Two, please on the Twitter, InspireProWrestling.com, PittsburghWrestling.com, SorgatronMedia.com. I'm at MikeSorg.com, and you can find all the things I do from there. And at Sorgatron on the Twitters, uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com is where all the shows live, and all the links so you can subscribe to us, video and audio versions, all over the place. Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, the Facebook group where we have a lot of conversation, and the Google Plus at Mayhem Show on the Twitters, and. Uh, that's all I got. Thank you guys. We'll see you guys next week. Support some indie rest. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Wow. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. 
Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.